speed, the one thing all useful aircraft have in common. And the more an aircraft has, the more invincible it becomes. Over the years, countries have set out to build the fastest aircraft they could build. Aircraft so fast and invincible that cameras couldn't capture them. Sound couldn't keep up with them, and eyes could only see them as a blur. Of all the nations that set out to achieve this feat, the US has been the most successful at it. For the last four decades, an American aircraft has held the record for the fastest air-breathing aircraft in history. But the US isn't stopping there. More and more aircraft are still being developed to go even faster. These ultra-fast American aircraft are the focus today, and they will be discussed in detail in this video, starting with the record holder, the SR-71 Blackbird. The Strategic Reconnaissance 71, or SR-71 nicknamed Blackbird, is a long-range, high-altitude aircraft that flew on missions from 1964 to 1999. The SR-71 had special abilities that were so borderline impressive, the jet was flown by both the US Air Force and NASA. One of these abilities was its insane speed. For the last 47 years, with a blurry speed of Mach 3.3, the SR-71 has held the record for the fastest air-breathing manned aircraft in history. To achieve these speeds, the SR-71 is powered by two Pratt & Whitney J-58 engines, producing 3,200 pounds of thrust each. In operation, these heavy-duty engines could reach temperatures as high as 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, four times that, and they would be as hot as the surface of the sun. In the cockpit, this heat was handled by a powerful air conditioner and pressurized astronaut suits from the David Clark Company worn by the pilots. These suits also helped pilots with breathing at high altitudes where the air is too thin for humans to breathe. This was life-saving, as the SR-71 could go as high as 85,000 feet, a record altitude yet to be broken by any other air-breathing jet to this day. To withstand the stress that comes from its high speeds and space-bordering altitudes, the SR-71 is 92% made up of the strongest metal ever discovered, titanium. Another major hurdle that had to be overcome via the jet's design was that moving so fast could pull so much air into the jet engines that's enough to extinguish them. To address this, shock cones were placed at the engine intake openings. The shock cones create a shock wave that slows the incoming air so the engine can use it efficiently as it burns through the required 80,000 pounds of fuel for every mission, which is a lot of fuel. In fact, the fuel was so much that the jet got too heavy to take off despite using special custom tires. So, during takeoff, the jet was loaded with only half the required fuel and was loaded with the remaining half in the air before the start of a mission. Being a strategic reconnaissance aircraft, the SR-71 didn't need weapons to execute its missions. It did need to defend itself, though, when spotted. And although the jet had no weapons, it had the best defense it could ask for. So much so that none of the 32 Blackbirds built was ever lost to enemy fire. What was this defense? Once again, it's its speed. Should the $292 million jet come under fire, the pilot simply accelerates to uncatchable speeds, outrunning every bullet, missile, or lightning that shot at it. After a slew of successful missions, the SR-71 was fully retired in 1999. Two decades after, with Russia and China becoming more near-peer by the second, the US is once again in dire need of an aircraft so invincible it could not be shot down. And so, a successor to the SR-71 is being developed. Bigger, faster, and this time armed to the teeth. Enter the SR-72, the son of Blackbird. The SR-72, nicknamed the son of Blackbird, is everything its father was and more. For one, it could have the widest array of weapons from guns to missiles, and even laser-directed energy weapons. 
remaining a reconnaissance surveillance aircraft, it would also feature intelligence sensors and the highest quality cameras to take photos that are almost 100 miles wide. Just like the Blackbird did, but from altitudes higher than the Blackbird. And with the Blackbird already having set the bar so high, literally, a higher peak altitude for the SR-72 could make the SR-72 touch the edge of space. With space being NASA's territory, it's no wonder that NASA is heavily involved in the development of the $1 billion son of Blackbird. NASA was also the last to retire the SR-71, doing it one year after the Air Force did. This retirement of the SR-71 left what was considered a coverage gap between surveillance satellites, manned aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles for ISR missions. And in addition to that, the growth of anti-satellite weapons, anti-access tactics, and counter-stealth technologies has rekindled the need for speed that could penetrate protected airspace to observe and strike a target, before the opposition could do anything about it. For this reason, the SR-72 will have a top speed of Mach 6, about twice as fast as record holder SR-71. To attain these blurry speeds, Lockheed Martin has teamed with Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop a turbine-based combined cycle engine, or TBCC engine. This engine overcomes the biggest challenge to hypersonic travel, which is that traditional hypersonic scramjet engines alone cannot accelerate aircraft from a stationary position to a sonic boom. To solve this, the TBCC engine uses turbojet engines to accelerate the aircraft from a start position to speeds high enough to allow the transition to a scramjet as the source of thrust. A similar engine setup was used in the Blackbird, and so with 30 years of knowledge gathered from that, the new engines would be able to thrust the SR-72 to its unrivaled hypersonic speeds. Miles away from the SR-70s and from the stables of an Atlanta-based startup known as Hermius, there's another American jet being developed to reach jaw-dropping hypersonic speeds that even the Blackbird probably couldn't dream of. Enter Hermius's Quarter Horse. Quarter Horse is the first aircraft from Hermius and is fitting to break the SR-71's speed record to be the fastest aircraft on the planet. Thanks to an unrivaled payload capacity, Quarter Horse currently stands as the closest thing to a commercial hypersonic jet of the future, although it no doubt has its military or space applications. In fact, the Air Force and NASA have invested in the startup company because hypersonic speeds is a department that even they haven't been able to completely crack. NASA's exact investments aren't widely known. But the Air Force put forward $60 million for the test flight of the Quarter Horse. And this isn't the first time the Air Force would be investing in the startup. Roughly a year before the latest $60 million investment, they also conjured up a $1.5 million contract for Hermius to continue its work on hypersonic travel after the company successfully tested its engine prototype in February 2020. Hermius's homemade TBCC engine slated to power the quarter horse is known as Chimera. In a 2022 test that took place at the Notre Dame Turbo Machinery Laboratory, which provides heated air to simulate high Mach temperatures and pressures, Chimera's ability to power the quarter horse was confirmed. At low speeds, Chimera would operate in turbojet mode powered by the General Electric J8521 engine which can produce up to 5,000 pound force of thrust. As the temperature and the speed of the incoming air increase, and the turbojet begins to near its performance limit between Mach 2 and 3, the ramjet takes over propulsion to keep the aircraft accelerating to hypersonic speeds. As a result, Quarter Horse will reportedly have a top speed of over Mach 4, a flight ceiling of 80,000 feet, and an operational range of about 517 miles. To handle the stress that comes with such speeds and altitude, the Quarter Horse has a titanium alloy primary structure. And to keep risk at a minimum, the jet will be operated remotely, meaning it doesn't need to have a pilot in its cockpit. Quarter Horse is on schedule to fly in the fourth quarter of 2023, where it would either give the US Air Force reason to contemplate what happened to their $60 million or prove its capabilities beyond any reasonable doubt.
A successful quarter horse test would be just the morale boost Hermius needs to double down on its second remote-controlled hypersonic vehicle, Dark Horse. The Dark Horse, Quarter Horse, SR-72, and SR-71. Over the last 57 years, these four American aircraft have kept the U.S. ahead of the rest of the world in the race for hypersonic missiles dominance. But the only way they can continue to do so is by you subscribing to this channel and giving this video a like. So do that now, and thanks for watching.